Okay, so agenda for today, we're going to discuss five foods you should never buy or eat again. And if you care about your joints, heart, brain, and more, we're going to say time to get rid of those things. And then number two, we're going to talk about four things to check for on your labels. It's really good that we look, become little detectives, and know what's what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat. And number three, we're going to talk about six toxic coffee creamers to avoid. This is a good time to check the pantry again. And if you have those things, then get them out. Number four, we're going to discuss a and reveal a special way, a new way to enjoy your morning coffee. And then again, at the, at the end, we'll have a live Q&A with myself and Coach Rachel here. So let's get started with these five foods you should never buy or eat again that are typically banned in Europe. And starting with wheat thins. Who here has some wheat thins in your house? If you've got some wheat thins in your house, say, I have wheat thins in the chat. So check this out. According to market data, wheat thins are the fifth best-selling cracker brand in the United States. However, they are banned in the UK, Japan, and other parts of Europe because they can be an ingredient called BHT or butylated hydroxytoluene. Now, some of these words I'm going to pronounce today, I, I had to actually look them up on YouTube to how to pronounce them. I didn't know how to pronounce them. So I hope this, I got this butylated proxy, right? And why have they been banned? Well, long-term exposure to high doses of tea has been proven toxic in animal studies causing thyroid and kidney problems. It's also been linked to impaired lung function and blood coagulation leading to things like strokes. And toxicology studies have, fa have found that it can cause enlargements in the liver, inflammatory effects in the lungs, renal dysfunction, and a decrease in potassium levels. And BHT can also act as a tumor promoter in certain situations. And this lab, this is lab-made food. It's, a, it's flavored, it's enhanced artificially. It's also found in many uh, breakfast cereals, frozen foods, and chewing gum even. So who here has wheat thins in their house right now? Anybody, Rachel? It, yeah, we do have a few yeses in the comments. I do not have in my pantry, but Chad, a good rule of thumb, like you said, when you have to Google and you have to look up how to pronounce it, it tells you maybe you shouldn't have it in your diet because it's like you can't identify what it is. It's not natural. It's man-made. It's made in a, a lab, like you said. So it's probably best not to have something that we have to Google on how to pronounce it in our diets. Yeah, not the healthiest thing. Yeah. So wheat thins suggestion today, they should maybe they should go. Maybe it's time for them to go and look for something else. And we can talk about some other substitutes at the end. That's number one. Let's get on to number two. Very popular drink here. Very popular drink, Gatorade. It's got those dyes. It's got yellow number five, yellow number six, red number 40, right? So Gatorade and Lib Little Debbie cracker cakes too. The, the <laughs> These have them too. This, this hydration assistant and innocent treats are banned in the European Union because they contain dyes like yellow number five, yellow number six, and red 40. And red dye 40 is made from petroleum. Ooh. It's approved for use in foods and drinks. However, potential side effects include irritability and depression, asthma, skin irritation, migraines, and tumor growth. And I really want to put that out there because a lot of people experience things like depression and asthma and skin irritation and migraines, and maybe even experience a tumor growth. And they, they end up going to the doctor, right? And the doctor might more than likely going to give them a prescription pill, but the questions are never asked. What are you eating? What are you drinking that could be contributing to this problem? We have to really pay attention to that. So when it comes to the yellow side of the rainbow, Researchers found that although this, this yellow number five, right, although it's a food coloring, it wasn't immediately toxic to white blood cells, it does damage DNA, causing cells to mutate over time. So who here has some Gatorade in their house? Rachel, you have a Gatorade in your house? I do not, but I have to say, I was reading the, the thread and I was seeing that Deborah said she's never had it, nor gives it to her kids, which is really good because the majority of kids are having these sports drinks. And, mm -hmm. and see a lot of kids are having issues with their asthma, with their, you know, paying attention. I mean, there's so many different issues that come from having these drinks and having them on a regular basis. So it's really important, not just for ourselves, but for our kids, grandkids, everybody not to be drinking it. Yeah, lots of, and I would see this all the time when I go on, out doing home health physical therapy, I go into people's homes who are dealing with lots of chronic diseases. A lot of them just chugging on Gatorade all the time, all the time. You know, and it's good to have potassium and magnesium and salt 
those things are those electrolytes are very good for us but there's other ways to get them in without coming with things like yellow number five yellow, yellow number six and 40 red whatever right so who here is Gatorade <laughs> look at that all right number three number three here we go skittles and chewing gum right skittles and chewing gum also things like you know eclipse trident mentos right so who here has some of those things right so check this out skittles are banned due to the dyes but the, the country of norway actually banned skittles because they contain titanium dioxide which is titanium dioxide it's an inorganic chemical it's used as a base dye something like a paint primer and that's used before color is added this ingredient is common in many items beyond skittles including cake mixes and chewing gum weaken the gut lining and worsen the progression of inflammatory bowel disease and other studies have also shown titanium dioxide can cause dna damage and genetic instability and this is something that we were talking about this earlier like when people chew gum they're like i don't eat the gum yeah. you know i don't swallow the gum it's probably fine but we forget that like we're putting that gum in our mouth and we're chewing and we're chewing and the saliva that we're producing in our mouth is getting mixed out, mixed with whatever comes out of that gum, right? And here we, we're seeing where titanium dioxide, for instance, can come out of the gum. We swallow that saliva, which goes down into our gut lining, which has an impact, right? It has an impact everywhere down the chain, which can lead to the, all the things like autoimmune diseases and everything that comes after a poor gut lining, right? Yeah. So who here? is still chewing on this some of this gum right this is a good good time to go check that out and maybe rethink some of this stuff and this next one though is going to get us i think rachel this is going to be yeah. a big surprise but here we go because here it is number four chlorinated chicken you heard that right chlorinated chicken insufficient hygiene standards so check this out in the u.s chicken is routinely washed in a chlorine solution before it becomes market ready. And this antimicrobial treatment is supposed to reduce the possibility of salmonella contamination and other bacteria, but it is also the main reason the European Union has had a ban on American chickens since 1997. And the EU is not concerned about chlorine consumption per se, rather it questions why the chicken must go through deep cleaning in the first place. I asked the same question. So the EU thinks that there should be a high level of safety throughout the food chain from farm to fork. Not only cleaning the meat heavily at the end of the process to compensate for insufficient hygiene standards earlier, plus, <clears throat> The, from Southampton University, uh, they found that disease-causing bacteria like listeria and salmonella remain active after the chlorine washing. So even if you do it, it still, it still remains active. Chlorine washing just makes it impossible to detect the bacteria in the lab, giving a false impression that the bacteria have been killed when they have it. And this means that chlorine washed chicken could still carry salmonella and other bacteria, which is a clear human health risk. In fact, rates of food poisoning have been recorded several times higher in the US than the UK. So we're like, we're really missing the mark on something there. And I, and I really appreciate how in Europe, they, this farm to table concept, right? How, how the animal was grown, what it ate, what it drank, you know, was it given hormones and antibiotics? And, 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 and once they start processing the animal, are they putting all kinds of bleaches and dyes in there to preserve it? You know, in Europe, when I was there, we would go to we would go to like restaurants and behind them was a farm yep. right and behind them was a farm and, and you could see right there it went from there to here on my plate right no steps but here we have a lot of different steps so i say that because i don't want you to start eat, stop eating chicken like but you can find good quality chicken you can find you can find chicken that's grass or free range never given hormones and antibiotics certainly never given this chlorinated chlorine goes in pools and you know i don't even I still do. I wouldn't even recommend you go in a chlorinated pool, <laughs> you know, so it's just to put, to put it in our mouth, to put it in our food, to put it in our meats. Again, we're curious where, where all these diseases come from. It's not necessarily genetics. It's what these foods do to our genetics, right? It's the way our, where our genes are being expressed. It's a big part of what we're trying to, to teach here at Native Path. And yeah, then so it, wait, Chad, I have to say like this one definitely was shocking for me. And it makes me disgusted to see that that's what we're rinsing our meat with that we're going to be cooking and eating. So like why? And then to hear that it's meant to keep them clean and rinse off bacteria, which in turn, we find out it actually doesn't allow us to get the proper test results. Like why is it okay? It makes you so mad that it's okay 
for us to keep serving it here, but other countries have banned it. Like that just irritates me to no end to know that we're still allowing this to go in, knowing how many issues it's causing with people. Yeah, I, th I think it's a good question. Like, why, why is it happening? And a big part of it is people don't know. It's a lot of people watching this call right now had no idea they're eating chlorinated chicken. And they don't even know that it, don't even know that it could be causing some of those things uh, that we talked about, right? Like the health issues. So there's, there's not a connection there. Whereas in Europe, they have that awareness and they have that connection because they've been producing their chickens a certain way for a long time and they're watching us, right? They're, they're being like, oh, they've got more health issues and they're doing it that way, not over here. We're not going to do it. And we also have industry tied up over here. So we have a farming industry, uh, manufacturing industries, chicken industries, pharmaceutical industries, you know, all tied to things doing a certain way. And I don't want to make any industries wrong, but there's just a vested interest in keeping things the way they've been. Because if you change things, there's going to be a change in, in profits, right? There's going to be a change in revenue. And that's just the way it is. So again, what's important, I don't want to alarm anybody, but we do want to create awareness and we do want to uh, take steps. And this is why we want to keep going back to the pantry and be like, is this, is this good for me and, and what I value in my health, right? Absolutely. Here we go. Number five, you ready for this? Yes. Coffee mate, coffee mate, partially hydrogenated soybean and cotton seed oil, right? People, people probably hopefully by now know that trans fats are bad, but trans fats like the partially hydrogenated soybean and cottonseed oils in coffee mate were officially banned in the United States as of June 18th, 2018, but certain loopholes allow them to continue to be used in products. Going back to that legislation, the industry thing, right? Trans fats are a particularly dangerous type of fat that are great for preserving the shelf life of processed foods, but terrible for your cardiovascular health, proven to increase your risk of developing heart disease, type two diabetes, and strokes. And these have been banned in many other countries in, in Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, Iceland, and Denmark. And the Food and Drug Administration still hasn't forced manufacturers to remove these dangerous artificial fats from our food. In fact, labeling guidelines allow manufacturers to put a zero in the column next to trans fats if the food contains less than 0 0.5 grams per serving. That's a tricky thing. Right, can still contain trans fats, even though you look on it on the back of it and you see no sign of that. Right, mm -hmm. think about that. It's easy to see how then the average American still consumes 1.3 grams of artificial trans fats every day without even knowing it. Not to mention, creamers like Coffee Mate are generally made from various types of sugar, unnecessary stabilizers, and a whole host of artificial flavorings. So, going back to the coffee. Morning coffee. Who who here has been who's been using coffee mate? And I don't want to make it make anybody wrong, but it'd be great if you just share. Just be, you know, let be open and honest and say, hey, I've been using coffee mate. I didn't know about this stuff. Thank you for because I, I didn't know about this stuff till we started doing research about it. Right. I just assumed it was bad. But you looking you looking a little more. You're like, whoa. So don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I understand. And drinking habit, it is a ritual. Like, I don't know about, I think you're the same way, Rachel. Like you said earlier, like we wake up early. We have, uh, I like to wake up, have my cup of coffee. I go outside in the patio, light a little candle, wait for the sun to come up and listen to the birds and just hold this cup of coffee in my hand as the sun comes. It's, it's so like sacred and important. We don't want to take the coffee ritual away, right? So from the sound of it brewing to the rich aroma that fills the house, it provides a grounding, comforting feeling like no other. But if you take your coffee with a few splashes of coffee creamer, it may turn that comforting coffee into a toxic sludge. We really got to be mindful of what we put in there. And I know you're probably thinking it's just a couple tablespoons a day if you're using like coffee bait or stuff like that. How bad could it be? But we got to think we're doing that every day, every day of the year. It adds up. These simple little habits are so important. So let's let's pay attention to some things. So, there, well, there's a strong chance that your coffee creamer, even if it says organic or sugar free contains more than one toxic ingredient it could be quite toxic if you just look on the back of it. it could contain things like thickeners so did you know that most coffee creamers aren't actually made with cream think about that not even made with cream instead they they get their <clears throat> they get their rich velvety taste from thickening agents and emulsifiers like here we go carrageenum 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 is what's called carrageenum yeah <laughs> a, a thickener is it do you think i got that right carrageenum is i think how, how you pronounce it that sounds right to me yeah a, a thickener stabilizer and texturizer found in non-dairy products that cause inflammation digestive problems 
and here we go again, cancer, right? So in one long-term animal study, animals were fed a concentration of 0.1 to 5% carrageenum, and in just six to 12 weeks, colitis and tumors began to appear in those animals, right? Think about that. Further research indicates that this food additive causes the gut to become irritated and inflamed, creating holes in the gut lining of the gut. Who gets caught in these holes? It wreaks havoc on the digestive system, leading to chronic illness. It can lead to a whole host of autoimmune issues. Again, conventional medicine is like, well, we don't know. Let's just give you a pill. Yeah. When we have to think about the cause, what's the root of the problem? What's causing our problems, right? We have to eliminate those things before we even bring in solutions. That's why pantry makeovers are so helpful. Absolutely. And like you said, Chad, it's have, even though your mindset might be, I only have a little bit every single day, what harm can it cause? Like you said, it's accumulation of doing it every single day. Think of that seven days a week that adds up. You're going through containers and containers of it. That's going to cause a lot of damage over time. So it's best, even if you think it's a little bit to put something much better in your, your body. Yeah. And like that, that's why the, you know, don't let this stuff in your home, you know, it maybe have just a little bit when you go out or you're, you're at a friend's house you're at a, or you're at a restaurant. Maybe, maybe that's where like to just to be a part of the social situation, that's where you have it. But what you can control is what you bring into your home. You can look on the, on the back of labels and be like, no, this is not, this is not on the path. This has got to go. This is off the path, right? Let's bring in stuff that's on the path, so to speak, right? So then we have fillers, locust bean gum. There's another one. So fillers like locust bean gum, while generally considered safe, are simply just unnecessary. It's like, there's nothing good about it. So don't worry, locust bean gum is not made from locust. Like it's not a type of grasshopper. That's what I thought it was actually first. It's a natural food thicker. <laughs> yeah, it's a natural food thickener derived from the seed of carob trees. And although safe to consume, some individuals may be allergic to it. Some individuals may be actually very allergic to it and it can cause breathing problems and asthma and things like that. So again, some things that we're experiencing, could be very well ca caused by what we're putting into our body. And then we have chemical preservatives. And this is, <clears throat> this is some more things I had to look up on YouTube right here, just, just to learn how to pronounce. So, you know, BHA, butylated hydroxy anisole, butylated hydroxy toluene, BHA and BHT, BHA, BHT. So preservatives protect your food from mold, air, bacteria, fungi, yeast, and food contaminations. But here's the catch. There are preservatives that are natural and ones that are chemically manufactured. And two chemically manufactured preservatives include what we're showing here, BHA and BHT. And these two preservatives keep foods from changing color, changing flavor, or becoming rancid. And one study found that BHA and BHT negatively affected sleep by altering serotonin and norepinephrine levels. And that's a stress hormone released by the vent has occurred. In addition, the use of BHA and BHT have been linked to endocrine disrupting effects and reproductive disorders. And you, many people probably, I think by now have been hearing things like the rate of humans is, is starting to go down a little bit. People were having more challenges yeah. having children than they were 20, 50, 100 years ago, right? And a lot of it is because of this stuff, right? We have, we have to really bring awareness to that. And then we have artificial sweeteners because sugar is bad. And so that's what they did. Sugar is bad. So then we got to make some artificial ones to make it better. That's, that's, that's yeah. what humans were thinking, right? Yep. So you see things like sugar-free, you see things like aspartame, sucralose, and here we go. I had to look this one up. Acesulfame, how you do? Oh, yep. And potassium. Yep. <clears throat> so you read sugar-free, right? You're assuming it must be good for you. It got no sugar. It must be good. But what cost is that, right? So when you see sugar-free, I got a little thing. When you see sugar-free, just think chemical storm. When you see fat-free, think chemical storm. Like really be put on the detective goggles. Artificial sweeteners like aspartame, sucralose, and acyl sulfame, potassium, are sugar substitutes that duplicate the effect of sugar in taste, but usually have little to no calories. And side note, zero calorie products actually lead to weight gain. Think about that. I mean, how, who here has been like for a long time been eating low fat foods, low calorie foods, zero calorie foods, and still gaining weight and be like, why? You know, I, I, <laughs> why, right? So, yeah. I'm 
I'm so happy you brought that up because that's honestly the marketing game where I want to say scheme that you see so many companies do is everybody thinks they're making healthier choices. And it's frustrating as a consumer thinking that you're trying to avoid sugar, you're going for these sugar-free, dairy-free, or um, you know, all these different free, free things. And then you go and you actually find out, no, they just put these different chemicals in there that are making me think that I'm getting it, but I'm in the end, I'm craving more of it. And then I want more of it throughout the day. And then I'm gaining weight when I'm supposed to be losing weight, when I'm avoiding it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this whole mindset that all these consumers have that just because it said sugar-free, I'm gonna be making a healthier choice. And then when you go to this, all the little coffee shops, you see all those little packets, they're all fun little colors, the yellows, the pinks, the blues, and you just want to open it up and dump it in your coffee. It, they, it's everywhere you go, you see it. And that's what everyone thinks is a healthier choice to put in your coffee instead of dumping in the sugar. That's such a great point. I mean, we have to really make a distinction um, what people are saying when they say, I eat healthy, mm -hmm. right? Because because what, what one person says when they say, I eat healthy, that could just be what the conventional system has described to us and conditioned us to be healthy. Whereas like what, I, what I'm learning now and, and, and what, we're, what you and I have learned and we're trying to share with everybody is like, actually that is what we're told is very unhealthy. It's actually the thing, what they're telling us is the thing that's actually making us so unhealthy and, and overweight and sick, right? And we have to completely go back to like native ways of eating and the way our ancestors ate and moved and lived. And much of our answers can be found by adopting these doing, doing it like humans have been doing for thousands and thousands of years. But a lot of this, these diseases came in when we started changing our foods and they're telling us it's healthy and it's not healthy. So <clears throat> anyway, I digress. So side effects of artificial sweeteners. This is a big debate. People are like, oh, they're fine. They're no problem. Well, here's the side effects. And you can Google this too. So allergic reactions to such as hives and swelling, bladder cancer, bloating, brain tumors, I really want to stop it. Like there's an incredible amount of research showing that these artificial sweeteners can cause and wreak havoc on the neurological system. When we mess with the brain, when we mess with the neurological system, it's not pretty. Like I saw this all the time as physical therapists. Like you, 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 if you don't have a good nervous system, you have a hard time walking. You have a hard time remembering things. You have a hard time even remembering your wife's name. You know, a lot of things happen there, but, but there's zero calories. <laughs> you know, and we got to really be, be careful of that. So artificial sweeteners can also lead to things like diarrhea, nausea, infertility, seizures, and weight gain. Again, the person who's trying to lose weight and, and using artificial sweeteners, thinking they're doing good, but actually causing more harm. And then we have six coffee creamers to avoid at all cost. So this is where we're going to do another, another little pantry makeover. So if you have any of these things in your pantry, let's just go ahead and, 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 Put that in the chat too. We really, really want to like make sure we, we look over these things. So we've already talked about coffee mate. So let's review five others that currently dominate the market. And number one, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts original coffee creamer is jam packed with sugar, corn syrup, cream, artificial flavors, artificial colors, palm oil, dipotassium phosphate, potassium citrate, and last but not least, carrageenum. There it goes again. And then number two, Starbucks. Who likes who likes the Starbucks creamer? You know, so Starbucks released their first creamer collection, caramel. It had white chocolate and uh, cinnamon dolce, and that was in August of 2019. And although they may contain less sugar than their top lattes, like macchiatos and frappuccinos, which range from 35 to 69 grams of sugar, most Starbucks coffee creamers contain six grams of sugar per tablespoon. So with just three tablespoons you're already at 18 grams of sugar. And when you take into account that the recommended daily amount of sugar for men and women is 25 to 30 grams respectively, 18 grams, first thing in the morning is not the best choice. We talk about avoiding sugar and carbohydrates in the morning. Starting your day with protein and fat is one of the first things you can do to get on the path and change your health, right? When we start it with these sugar creamers and go to Starbucks and get that stuff, it really sets us back and doesn't set us up for a win. Number three, we have International Delight. International Delight made its grand appearance in 1987 and is dubbed the world's first flavored liquid non-dairy coffee creamer. And they were in fact the gateway creamer that brought a new intention to the coffee creamer industry. Creamers could be more than just a substitute for milk. And each tablespoon of International Delight coffee creamer includes a whopping five grams of sugar, and that is not all. Its ingredients list includes water, 
cane sugar, and palm oil, and contains 2% or less of sodium caseinate, that's a milk derivative, dipotassium phosphate, carrageenum, again, mono and diglycerides, natural and artificial flavors, sodium sterilate, lactylate, salt, and that's nine ingredients in just one tablespoon of creamer. And that's not including the natural and artificial flavors, whatever those could be. What, what do you think about that, Rachel? Oh my gosh. I have to tell you, I, I'm getting sick just looking at it. Cause I mean, I have to say, I, you know, personally can say I used to have those in my fridge back in the day when I was in college, those were, what I, you know, you see them all the markets, they come in the fun, colorful bottles. So I was guilty of having those, but listening to you read those ingredients and seeing how much sugar that you're adding to your cup of coffee to start your day is like, holy smokes and the oils and the fillers and oh my goodness. Yeah, Dad. I, yeah it's incredible. It's hard for me to read, <laughs> like literally because I can't pronounce it, but still it's hard for me to read. <laughs> and then we have no Milk, which may be a plant-based coffee creamer, but it still contains the nasty ingredients of traditional coffee creamers. So for instance, ingredients in Silk's vanilla almond creamer include almond milk, cane sugar, high oleic sunflower oil, pea protein, potassium citrate, baking soda, sunflower lecithin, natural flavors, sea salt, and gel and gum. Mm. Mm. And then number five, any, again, coming back to sugar-free, any sugar-free coffee creamer, any coffee creamer that has sugar-free slapped on its label should be avoided. Think chemical storm. Very usually implies, implies artificial sweeteners like aspartame, sucralose, erythritol, and more. We really just got to look on the back of that stuff and be detectives when we're shopping and, uh, and be mindful of that stuff. Uh, and I'm happy you brought that up, Chad, because most people were used to looking at labels at calories, you know, the sugar count, but not actually diving deep and looking at the ingredients. And after what you read today, it's so beneficial to our health to actually start going below the, the, the nutritional value and actually seeing what you're putting into your body. Yeah, that's another great point. Like, so rather than look at the calories, think about the quality of those calories, right? Calories are, you need calories. You just need, you need, you need quality calories. You know, and it's, it's really important. So we got to be mindful of that and change, change the way we're thinking. So now, of course, I'm not going to tell you uh, all the coffee creamers ingredients to avoid without giving you an A plus alternative to turn to. So you may have tried one of our creamers before, but if you haven't, these are native path creamers, right? Every scoop of our one of a kind creamers, not only are they deliciously tasteful, but they also provide you with 2.5 grams of youth promoting collagen protein, five grams of coconut derived MCTs that they're keto friendly, and it's just 60 calories per serving. It's a lightweight powder that dissolves easily and never clumps, especially if you've got a little froth or thing. And it mixes perfectly in hot or cold beverage, beverages, including coffee, tea, matcha, smoothies, um, and more. And it's free of junk. Our native cat creamers are free of junk, no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners, no soy, no gluten, no sugar, and no dairy. And Native Path Creamers also provide fast energy, and that's thanks to their unique MCTs. They don't need to be digested the same way other dietary fats do. MCTs are quickly absorbed and then sent straight to the liver to be immediately used for energy by the body, making for a quick energy boost that lasts all day, and it boosts your metabolism. So due to the efficient conversion of MCTs into energy and the direct pathway of MCTs to the mitochondria, this is your body's powder power plants, your metabolism increases as does your body's propensity to burn stored fat. And then our creamers decrease cravings. That's why I was asking that question about sugar cravings in the morning. So studies have been shown that MC, coconut derived MCTs help reduce cravings between meals and decrease the intake of your following meal. So going back to what we talked about, about when people start their day, most people are doing it with carbohydrates and sugar, 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 like whether it's their food or what they're putting in their coffee, you can reverse your metabolism in terms of what it, what it gets its fuel on by starting your day with quality protein and quality fat. And that's essentially what we're doing in our native path creamers. And native path creamers support weight loss. So going back to that, the questions of you know people experiencing weight gain and not knowing why, MCTs can help with that. The creamers can help with that. MCTs appear to induce thermogenesis. And that's heat generating in the body, which helps burn fat and reduces unwanted weight. 
In a related study, consuming MCTs increased the body's energy expenditure in overweight individuals, leading to a loss of body fat. And MCTs are like brain food. Taking MCTs has been found to increase brain energy by eight to 9%, and MCTs can delay brain aging by promoting the repair of brain cell damage. Again, your brain, your brain's made up of fat. It just wants really good fat. It doesn't want the trans fats. It doesn't want the man-made fats. It wants natural fats, things like MCTs from coconut. And MCTs are also good for your gut. They've been well-studied for their antifungal and antimicrobial properties. And evidence shows that MCTs may also have a positive effect on gut health by stimulating good bacteria while reducing the growth of certain bad bacteria, helping to improve digestion and even mood. Starting your day off on the right track. So here we go. Just to recap here, Rachel and I and everyone here at Bernita Path is all about the rituals, especially the morning ritual. Um, and coffee is no exception. And that's why we decided to cut the junk and craft our very own creamer, one that provides a naturally nutritious boost without skimping on the delicious creamified flavors you know and love. And however, there's been one flavor, one flavor that is constantly requested by Native Path customers, and you may be one of them, that we couldn't release until we got it absolutely perfect. We looked over it, it's study, but I went back and forth, getting the flavor just right. What is this flavor? It's finally here. You asked for it. We answered it. Introducing Native Pass' newest coffee creamer flavor, hazelnut. Rachel, this, I, you texted me. You are you, you, you like this one a lot, right? This this is one I've been th honestly, and like I said, I admitted earlier. When I was in college, that was the creamer I always got was the hazelnut flavor. So that is something I kept, you know, saying that I wanted. I kept, you know, giving the feedback from our members in the, the community that were asking for the hazelnut as well. So I am beyond over the moon that we got hazelnut in. And I have to tell you, Chad, I tried it and it is, inc oh, you're enjoying it right now. Oh my gosh, I'm jealous because it is simply incredible. Like, and I did see a comment up here from Peggy that she said it was sweet for her. But the great thing about the scoop is you can adjust how much, you know, for your sweetness level. So that's what I love about not having it set in packets like we used to have. I love it in the scoop size. So you can control how little or how much you want to add. So you can get that level of sweetness that you like, that you, that you're looking for. But Chad, this is so tasty. The hazelnut is by far, all the flavors are delicious, but hazelnut by far is my favorite one. It is so good. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. When we started doing creamers, uh, we had other flavors like chocolate and we had butter pecan, you know, and uh, people were like, well, what about hazelnut? Yeah. What about hay? And we started looking around and doing research and all those other coffee mates and uh, silks, whatever the, all the artificial stuff, their number one bestsellers are hazelnut too. So we really took on a project of like, why don't we try to try to make our hazelnut, but make it the way we like to make it and make it better. And I'm glad you said the question about. Yeah. One thing we learned is, right? Um, what's sweet to me may be different sweet to you based on our diet. And what you mentioned is a great thing. You can always adjust the scoop size and add more or less and add more or less coffee and get it to the right level of sweetness. So there's lots of things you can do to make it a perfect level of sweetness. So let's talk a little bit more about the hazelnut, right? It has MCT and collagen in every scoop. We talked about starting the day with protein and fat. MCT is your fat. Collagen is your protein. It's the most abundant protein in the body. You start those, you start fixing a lot of problems. Instead of your body using sugar as fuel, this has no sugar. It has protein and fat. You get your energy from the protein and fat. And what that does, is it helps stabilize your blood sugar. You get all the benefits of energy and mood, but it fixes those cravings, right? You fix the thing that leads to overeating, which is overconsumption of sugar, right? So let's look at a little bit more here. The health benefits of native path creamer. We want to turn the creamers around. Creamers are used to be unhealthy. We can actually make our creamers very healthy. So check this out. The, uh, the native path creamers, what they're going to have in there, they have MCTs to increase your energy, curbs your appetite, clears brain fog, and it has collagen to reduce the youthful glow, strengthen hair and nails, support healthy bones and joints. It's a great way to start your day. Now, we're going to do an exclusive launch special today. We just released a few hundred jars of this brand new hazelnut coffee creamer aside. 
And right now you can ha you have the opportunity to stock up and save and just try it out with this very special discount that you may never see again. And all you need to do is click the link that Coach Rachel and Krista have entered in the chat. Krista, have you entered that in the chat there? She did. She just dropped it. Yes, just put it in there. You guys should all be able to see uh, right there. Just click that link and you'll head right to the page. Yeah, and I know a lot of people, sometimes people watch this on their on their phone and they're not like walking and things like that. So if you're if you're away from like your computer, we're going to email you this entire webinar as well. And that webinar will also include the special discount that's only available uh, for a limited time. But we love this. We're excited about it. We would love for you to try it and we want to hear your feedback about it. So now I'd like to remind you about our Feel the Difference Risk-Free Money Back Guarantee. And at Native Path, we truly believe in the quality of our products, which is why we offer a risk-free 60-day return policy. And when it comes to making simple changes that improve the health of your heart, joints, brain, digestion, bones, hair, skin, nails, and more, we want to make your decision easy and risk-free. And cleaning up your coffee routine is like step number one. If you're in a if you're someone who's like, oh, I just feel so healthy, I need to lose weight. Before we start joining the gym, before we start, you know, even sign up for the marathon or even even cleaning out the pantry, even start with the coffee. Because that's the first thing you do during the day, right? Get a win there, start feeling good there. And from that place, you can make all these other amazing changes. So again, going back to the 60-day guarantee, it's why we offer these 60 days to try out the, nas the Native Path Hazelnut Coffee Creamer with the MCT and collagen. I know you're going to love it to experience the metabolism, energy, joint, and whole body benefits for yourself. Plus enjoy the incredible natural, nutty, creamy, creamy, delicious flavor. And if for any reason, for any reason, you're not 100% satisfied, you may return your unopened products to us within 60 days of the day it's delivered to your door. You can just hang out. You have nothing to lose here really trying it out. So I hope everybody tries it out. It's amazing. Rachel likes that. I love it. Everybody on the Native Path team loves it. There's never been a better time to clean out your pantry and get healthy and start your day with the good stuff. And even if you just drink black coffee, I mean, it's kind of fun just to put it in there and have a little taste sometimes. Because um, I like black coffee too, but I also like to every now and then just put a little taste in there so you can always try it out. So again, thank you everybody for attending these webinars. They're so much fun. And again, you can lock in your exclusive launch pricing by either clicking the link coach Rachel and coach Krista entered in the chat or using the link that we will be emailing you um, along with the recording at the end of this webinar today and just to show you uh, a little bit more what a good labels look like right you can see here the nutrition facts of the native path hazelnut creamer so you can see the five grams of fat that's coming from the MCT you don't see any trans fats you don't see any crazy cholesterol things, just a smidgen of sodium because that's really actually good for you. Two grams of carbohydrates and two grams of, of protein, right? With the, with the collagen. So very minimal, like you don't see all the junk and the stuff you can't pronounce. It's just like real stuff. It's good for you, right? So inside the Native Path Creamer, again, you can see here, it has MCT powder, collagen peptides, monk fruit, and stevia. We, we sweeten it very naturally with super high quality monk fruit and stevia. There's been, I know there's a lot of talk about that. Again, quality matters. These are very healthy sweeteners when they come from very good sources and much better substitutes to things like aspartame and loads of sugar and all that stuff. All right, so that leads us to our live Q&A section. So uh, we, I think we have some Q&As in the, in the Q&A section. That's you see 19 there, so we'll get to those. So feel free to type any questions you may have in the Q&A feature. That's, that's about at the bottom of your screen. And to get further information that we can share with you today. And what I'll do now is go ahead and close this off. We'll come back here. All right. And let's get to the, the question. So let's get started. So why are these products still sold here? Why are they pro yeah, I think Brenda, I answered that question. I think Brenda, you know, Brenda's talking about all those products that are banned in Europe, but they're legal here. Again, we're <laughs> that's not the way we've been doing it. And there's a lot of industry and a lot of money around there. But truthfully, it's a lack of awareness. One of the great things about the United States is that we have it's a capitalistic society. The, the, the markets will change based on what consumers demand. But consumers are not demanding healthy foods. They're not demanding these changes. They haven't gone to uh, state leaders and senators and people that are in charge, right? The more people that become aware of this, and this is why we're doing what we're doing here at Native Path, the more changes we can make. If people stop buying that stuff, they'll stop making it. They really will. Uh, companies will make changes. Uh, but 
as far as the government, it's very much in, in, entangled with the industry. So they're not going to make the first step. It really, in my opinion, right now, it has to come from some consumers. When enough consumers do that, the governments will change. That's just the way it goes. And we'll vote in their people to make those changes. Christina says, how is there a safe way to get your electrolytes? So that's a really good question. And I'll also share that we are in the process of making our own electrolytes, um, electrolytes that are free of sugar. Um, sodium, magnesium, uh, salt, those are very important things for your nervous system, for your energy, for your mood. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of the Gatorade stuff, the Powerade stuff, as we mentioned, it has a lot of dyes. I'm going to share another brand that I like, but it's got a little bit more electrolytes than probably most people here watching need. It's more for athletes. It's called Element, L-M-N-T, uh, but it has about around a thousand milligrams of total uh, salt and magnesium. That's probably way more than what most people need here. But I would suggest taking about a fourth of the element packet and putting that in some water, having that first thing to start your day, zero sugar, zero bad ingredients. You can find on Amazon, L-M-N-T. And Luis says, but I have, Christina, when, when we come out with our native path elements, our native path electrolytes is going to be even better. Because <laughs> I promise you. So and we're, we're coming out with that. So uh, Lewis says, I started taking your collagen peptides for about three months. I have osteoporosis, got diagnosed with stage three uh, kidney liver disease. Is there anything, kidney disease or anything else I, I need to take? Um, was put on B3, K, vitamin K2, calcium and magnesium supplements. Also was put on B12 and a zinc and probiotics. That's really good. Um, you know, one thing Lewis, and I don't know if it's Luis or Lewis, um, but what I would suggest is our bone health collagen. Um, if, you're, if your goals are osteoporosis, taking a scoop daily of our bone health collagen and then another scoop of the collagen peptides. And the reason why I say that is because the collagen peptides are great for a lot of things, including your bones, it's, but it's also gonna help your hair, your skin, your nails, your tendons. The bone health collagen is gonna give you a much more targeted approach to your bones. And there's an incredible amount of research on bone health collagen. Um, if you go to YouTube and your native path and put in bone health, you'll see another webinar we did on bone health collagen. I would suggest you look at that, um, learn more about bone health collagen. There's an incredible amount of research I cover in that. That's what I would add. Everything else you're taking is good. The only thing I would take out, and this is going to sound a little weird, is the calcium. Um, we're, we're a culture that consumes more calcium supplements than any other culture. And we have some of the highest rates of osteoporosis. So I'd rather you get your calcium from food, from leafy greens, from nuts, everything else you're taking is good, but I would suggest dropping the calcium and the caveat is always talk to your doctor um, who's really familiar with the lab work. Uh, Brenda says, what about sunscreens? Same thing with sunscreens. If you look in the back, a lot of sunscreens, you're gonna see a lot of carcinogenic materials. And what do they say? If you go outside, put on sunscreen because you'll prevent you from getting cancer. It's interesting. But when you put those carcinogenic materials under heat, that's a, that becomes a real problem when you put it on your skin, which is the biggest organ in your body and absorbs everything, all the chemicals, everything going in there, which contributes to cancer. Mm -hmm. So we got to be really mindful of that. So what, what I suggest when it comes to the sun, I personally, I go to the sun every single day. I, I, I spend about 20 to 30 minutes in the sun in the morning with my shirt off and 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the evening with my shirt off. And I never, ever, 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 ever use sunscreen. That's the relationship with the sun. If you're getting 12 o'clock, three o'clock PM sun, that's a very harsh sun, but your body really agrees much better with morning and evening sun. So that's my, my suggestion there. Zinc oxide, I think is, is it zinc oxide, Rachel? Like that, that would be one option you can put on your face, um, things like that um, to keep it off. But really with the skin, I would suggest covering yourself. If you're out during the day at 3 PM, long sleeve shirt with a hat, you know, I have a fair complexion, blonde hair, all that. So I'm always real careful with that. So generally not a, not a fan of sunscreens. And uh, Helen says, Chad, can you talk to the facts that pigs are being given mRNA vaccine Do small organic farms who sell um, farmer's markets use this? It's a great, great thing, Helen. I mean, glad, glad you brought that up. Yeah, there's a lot of things vaccine wise that our animals are being fed. What's that, what's that documentary that Michael Pollan came out with uh, a long time ago? Food Inc, Food Inc, Food Inc. That, yep. Thank you for reminding me of that, Helen. Like, if you watch Food Inc., you'll see what they give these pigs, and not only the pigs, the chickens, and the cows. And 
<laughs> it is so bad. Like the vaccines can really mess up the whole genetic profile of the thing, which creates mutations down the road. You know, so lots of profile, lots of things. And, and you know, a, vaccine is a whole debate. We're, we're doing a big human experience experiment on this stuff right now. What we're doing is, is not tested in labs. <laughs> we were just hoping these things work, right? Yeah. Um, so when it comes to what you eat, remember, you're not just what you eat. You are what you eat eats. Right. And this comes back to like collagen too, for example. So for instance, native path collagen comes from cows that were raised in a beautiful way. They were raised that they were raised the way cows were meant to be raised, eating grass, rolling on fields, hanging out, getting sun, drinking clean water, never getting any hormones, never given any antibiotics, never giving any grains, right? Only eating what they nature intended for them to eat. On the same end, there's other collagen brands out there that were given, they were raised in a feedlot on dirt, that were stepping on their poop and, and in close quarters in a corral. And they were given grains to fatten them up and they got fat and they got sick. So they gave them antibiotics, right? You see where it goes. And then if you, if you eat that animal, you consume all this stuff, right? But that, that same practice applies to how chickens are raised and it applies to how cows are raised. It applies to fish, you know? So think about all the things where what you're not what you eat, you are what you eat eats. And going back to like other topics about climate change and things like that, you'll hear a lot, don't eat animals because it's bad for the climate. Eating animals is not bad for the climate. Eating animals grown in harmful ways, you can make a big argument is bad for the climate. But if you eat animals grown in very natural native ways, it's extremely good for the environment. We have to change the way we're growing and we're raising animals, right? That changes the whole ecosystem. Thank you, Helen, for that question. Um, Luann says, what about fresh cream from the farm? If you get fresh cream from the farm, that's much better. With the caveat that some people um, do have dairy allergies. I, I don't have necessarily have a problem with dairy allergies. My wife doesn't, but like my, some of my, my brother does. Some, other, some of my friends do. So you just have to really watch uh, the dairy proteins. Things like whey and casein can be problematic to a lot of people. But if you're getting it from the most natural source, that's great. I always recommend people take out dairy for, if they have health challenges, take out dairy for at least 30 days, then reintroduce it and see how it makes you feel. Um, and if you don't have no problems, then you know you're probably okay with dairy. Brenda says, uh, what should people um, use in place of these thickeners? So what I do, Brenda, especially when, I, when it comes to my coffee, you know what I use? I use butter. I put butter in my coffee. Um, what I do in my coffee is, is uh, sometimes I use a creamer, and sometimes I don't, but I typically always use collagen and MCT, and I put some butter in there to thicken it and a splash of sugar-free, artificial free. It's actually homemade nut milk, homemade nut milk. And uh, that, that butter gives it that, that nice little thickener. And you know what else is the nice thickener is the MCT. Like the MCT is in hazelnut. That's what I like about the hazelnut too. It, come, it comes in up like, I have to make my coffee. I put this, 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 this in there. Hazelnut coffee, one and done. It, yeah. The thickener is already in there. It's already gives it that like, what is it, the frappuccino kind of feeling that people like the latte type feeling. It does. It, it's, it makes you feel fuller too longer. And the thing is, it makes, like you said, the cream, the coffee gets really creamy and delicious with that combination between the MCT and the collagen. It's perfect mix. Nice. Balance. Yeah. Yeah. Nice balance. Nice balance. And John says uh, the sweetener can type two diabetes use honey as a sweetener or make cookies. So John, if you got type two diabetes, what I would suggest, first of all, know that you can truly reverse type two diabetes. I mean, what's happening with type two diabetes is, is your pa pancreas has been, has been producing a lot of insulin and the beta cells of your pancreas are getting burned out. You can regrow those beta cells, of the pancreas, they can, they can heal themselves. Um, but in order to do that, we got to stop putting glucose in the bloodstream and glucose comes from honey. It comes from sugar. It comes from sweeteners, those cookies, right? So if your interest is in, is in, is in doing that, then you've got to take it out for a while and allow those beta cells of the pancreas to, to reproduce and grow on their own. And then you'll become less dependent on injecting or taking insulin. Um, and you can change that type two diabetes, but I would recommend for you, John, like it, I, I would, I would email our customer experience team, ask for the native body reset and do a 30 day reset. And I, if I would, I would go 60, 90 days if I was John and like I was dealing with type two diabetes, but do a, do a, a lower carbohydrate whole food diet for an extended period of time, 
it would radically change your life. You can completely reverse type two diabetes. You can quote me on that. I've seen it, I've seen it many times. People have gone through that program uh, and that's a free program um, and, it's, and it's great. Um, but, but that's my, my suggestion on that is you have type two diabetes to avoid the honey, to avoid the sweeteners and avoid, this, avoid the cookies for a while until we get that reversed. Luann says, I'm diabetic. What do you suggest? I don't like the fake ones. So still use regular sugar, just not as much. What about date sugar? So Luann, that's the same, same very similar question to, to, to John. Um, what, I, that, what I would suggest, and I don't know if you're type one or type two diabetic, type one diabetes is a little bit different. It's more of an autoimmune type issue, um, but same, same thing with John. You know, I, I would recommend getting rid of the sugars for a while until you, through your own blood work, what you're noticing when, you're, when you prick yourself, you, your insulin levels, your blood sugar is more stabilized. Really get that stable. Move more to protein and fat like what we're doing with the hazelnut creamer, right? Start, especially starting your day with protein and fat. So hazelnut creamer in the coffee is a great way to do it, but also starting your day with protein and fat foods, making sure your first foods are things more like eggs and an avocado and a little bit of berries, as opposed to toast and orange juice and the banana, right? You see the difference there? One is protein and fat and a very low carbohydrate, high antioxidant berry. The other one, sugar, drinking sugar, bananas. That's where we get in trouble. That's, that's how we get type two diabetics. We got to reverse that again for everybody who's listening. If you want help on your nutritional plan, email cs at nativepath.com and say, Dr. Chad suggested I do the reset. Can you give me a copy of that? We'll give you a link. You put your email address in completely free. Thank you, Luann. Um, Brenda says, is regular white sugar okay to use then instead? So Brenda, I, you know, honestly, this goes back it'd be better. It's better than aspartame It's better than uh, sucralose and fructose. But if our goals are to get healthy, lose weight, feel better, there's better options, right? Monk fruit, stevia would be better options. And if you're dealing with any health issues, I would suggest removing the sugar altogether. Honey would probably even be a better um, option than sugar. Carla says, I just looked at my creamer, thought I was picking healthy, natural bliss almond creamer, just realized made by coffee. Great job, Carla. Who else like, who else did the, did the Carla thing today, became the hero, went to their pantry and found something that's not good. That's what you just made our day, Carla. Like, that's what we want. We've got to get rid of that stuff. And yeah, they, like Joanna says here, they lied to diabetics for years about eating and drinking foods with artificial sweeteners and zero. Heck yeah. I'm sorry they did that, Joanna, but we're learning. They did it. They did it and we're moving on. We got, we got to do better. Karen says, do you have a sample size of your creamer to try? Thank you. At this time, Karen, we don't, but when we are working on sample packs, so we will have those in the future. I envision a whole line of uh, sample packs for all our creamers. So you can pick your favorite one. But again, to sample, the best easy way to sample here is with that 60 day risk-free money back guarantee. You can try it. If you don't like it, you know, all your unopened bottles, you can return in 60 days after it's delivered. And uh, Sally says, is stevia bad too? No, no, stevia, as long as it's coming from a good source, like ours is coming from a super clean, very organic source, um, it's not a problem. It's a great natural way, plant-derived substitute, right? To, to sweeten your foods much better than any of the artificial stuff. Um, we love stevia and monk fruit in our, in our sweeteners and it tastes great and it doesn't, do all the negative changes in your blood sugar that things like sugar do and honey even does, right? It's, it's, it works much better. And, and if you figure out the blood sugar game for all my all our friends out there that are diabetic or having weight struggles, obesity, things like that, blood pressure issues, you figure out that game, you figure out a whole lot of things with your health. You just learn how to manage your blood sugar and stevia is going to be a much better substitute than sugar. Um, Carla says, do you have a creamer with cinnamon? Creamer with cinnamon. Wait, Rachel, I missed something? No, we do not have a, a creamer with cinnamon, but we do recommend putting a good quality cinnamon, cinnamon on top, like a sprinkle on top, but we don't currently have one at the moment. Yeah, I'm, that's what I do actually is when I make my coffee, so I put, as I mentioned, I put a little, I put it all in a blender. I put the butter, I put unsweetened nut milk, homemade nut milk, and then I put collagen. And MCT, blend it all up with my coffee, hot coffee. I pour into a mug and I put cinnamon on top. And that's, I think that's the, the best way to take cinnamon. Cinnamon has, we've tried stuff with, with creamers in the, in the cinnamon 
but it's just never, it doesn't preserve as well. It's like better fresh out of a thing and just as a topper on top. Um, so that's the best way I, I like to do cinnamon. We don't have any, any creamers, but you can put the cinnamon on top of the hazelnut for sure. And Ruth says, how much MCT is okay to have in one day? When is the best time in the day to take native mind? Hope you like that, Ruth. I'm, I'm drinking some native mind too. Is heavy cream okay in coffee? I use cream, but don't like sweet drinks. Unfortunately, all your collagens and creamers are a little sweet. Yeah, so again, going back to what Rachel said earlier, different people have different flavors and, and levels of sweetness they like. So for those people, you know, I would still suggest try the hazelnut creamer. If it's too sweet, use a little less use a little more coffee, just find the right level for you. MCT, how much in a day? I'd say two scoops max a day. Um, one is kind of the, the sweet line. The way you can tell with MCT um, and really any fats, if you're getting too many fats, what you'll notice is our, our changes in your uh, stools. You'll, they'll, they'll, I mean, I'm gonna get a little, it'll get a little liquidy. It'll, it, it, won't, it won't be together. So you, it's a very good indication of your digestive health when you look at your stools. So if you're having... Um, so much MCT or so much fat that you're seeing negative changes in your stool, that's when you want to back off a little bit. For most people, it's one to two. I wouldn't suggest having any more. Heavy cream, as long in your coffee, as long as uh, you don't have any, any negative reactions, um, you're fine. Most because it has just the protein or really just has the fat, very little. It has no lactose, right? So it doesn't have the, the dairy sugars that are highly problematic for people. Um, so usually for most people that heavy cream is okay. And Linda says, what about coconut oil spray by Trader Joe's? I don't trust those sprays, Linda. Look, look, so look, look on those sprays. Does it say coconut oil period? Or does it say coconut oil and this and that and that and that? Because what they're doing, they're taking coke perfectly good coconut oil and putting coconut oil on the label and they're trying to think, make us think it's all good. And they're using just a little bit of coconut oil and they use all these other things to add in there. So look on the, look on the back of that, Linda. I would love to know um, what's in there. So, and, and, and if you can't pronounce it, no, no, no. And Georgia says, my almond milk is organic, says no carrageenum. Yeah, see, we even have a hard time spelling it. I, 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 don't, even, I don't even know how to say it. And, and then gelum gum is that bad? Um, oh, but it has gelum. Yeah, so it has the gelum gum. That was one of the things we talked about, Georgia. So um, that's that's what I would suggest. We look for a better substitute. That's where the hazelnut creamer can really become a much better substitute. Um, uh, but the almond milk, the almond milk's tricky because the stuff says sugar free, and it'll, it'll still put in stuff like that. You know what I did, Georgia? <clears throat> I'm going to share a, a little thing. I, I, I have a thing called almond cow. I mean, it, co it costs a little bit. It's like, it's a little pricey, but in the long run, my wife and I have saved money. You can get this thing called almond cow, almond cow to make your own homemade nut milk. You can also order nuts like cashews or almonds um, online. Make your own, no sugar, no gum, nothing. And it's much better. That's how I use my, my almond milk. There's some other brands out there like Malk that you can buy, which is really pricey and goes rancid. So we were doing that and we ended up saving a lot more money when we got the almond cow. You can find that online by Googling almond cow and they may have it on Amazon too. Um, Carol says, most since most stevia and monk fruit are added to erythritol, except for stevia and the raw, what is the problem with erythritol? Um, well, it's, it's what it does to, I think a lot of blood sugar. Yeah, the negative impacts it has on blood sugar and, and what happens there. So the stevia and the monk fruit don't have such really zero minimal effects on the blood sugar, whereas the erythritol does. So really got to be careful with that. But that's that's the main thing is the impact it has on blood sugar. Um, we have another one anonymous says, I prefer 1% milk and coffee. Is that bad? So, so for those people, yeah, I would say it's bad, right? So for the people that are using milk in their coffee and milk in general, know that if you're drinking, the lower the amount of fat content you have in your milk, the more problematic it's gonna be, right? The fat in milk actually saves you from the problems that come with drinking milk. So milk on its own, like whole milk, if you took the cow, there's your milk, it's gonna have protein, fat, and carbohydrates. And in our culture, we've conditioned ourselves, they told us that fat is the enemy. So people started, people started taking milk, fat out of milk, right? But what you're left with is just a whole lot of lactose, like sugar, 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 sugar. And that's gonna spike your blood sugar. This is where it gets tricky. People drinking low fat, 1% milk, trying to lose weight, 
thinking it's good for their cholesterol, thinking it's good for their heart, they're actually gaining weight left and right. You'd be better off having whole milk or the whole creamer that um, our, our, someone mentioned earlier. Um, so, you know, milk, not good for the bones. There's other ways to do that. Not good for the, really anything. Again, I would suggest if you're dealing with any health issues, take it out, take out milk altogether. Um, our electrolytes in sugar-free coconut water. Uh, yes, you're going to find some electrolytes in there. You'll, you'll find some potassium and magnesium. You won't probably find salt. Um, I think if I, I get suspicious about though when it says sugar-free coconut water, actually, because there's carbohydrates in coconut water. I'm really curious about coconut water that's sugar-free. I don't know what's going on in there, but there are some, Carla, with coconut water, you really got to be careful. Um, coconut water is best drinking on really, really hot days when you really expended a lot of energy, right? If you're not expending a lot of energy and you're just drinking coconut water, drink coconut water, that's when it can lead to a lot of issues, right? So it's, it's really best for people who are really putting out a lot of energy, who are already lean and, and happy with their body weight, right? Electrolytes, best in the stuff I was talking about, like elements, just taking like a fourth of the packet. That's a good way to get it in and, and waiting for native path electrolytes to come. And then Cheryl's, Cheryl says, I use two scoops of collagen every morning in my coffee. Also half um, real sugar and French creamer, French vanilla creamer. My creamer has carrageenum only in it. And it is the last item in the ingredients list. Is that okay? Yeah, in my opinion, Cheryl, no. This comes back to what Rachel said earlier when people say, I just have a little bit. Is that okay? If you just had a little bit, one day a year when you went over to your neighbor's house, that'd be okay. But that's not what we're doing. We're using a little bit every day, which adds up to a lot at the end of the year and over a lifetime, right? If you can find something that you like just as much, if not better, that doesn't have that, that's way better, right? So I would, me, if we're, do, if we're hanging out and doing the native path thing, I would throw it away. I would get something because I, I don't like it. And I would, I would choose the, the hazelnut creamer and, and use something better, right? That, that's my take. And I think you'll feel better. And, I, and I, would, I, would go, I would try it. I would try it and just see. And Lane says, isn't chlorine used by city water purification systems? Didn't it stop cl chloria? It isn't evil. And there's a lot, of, a lot of different things that you'll hear, right? I mean, a lot of different, different opinions on what's going on with the water system and things like that. And they'll say, it saved us from this and it saved us from that. I'm not going to say it's evil. I'm just going to say like, I don't, I don't trust it. You know, I don't trust it, especially when it comes to what, what goes in my water. You know, we, we, we filter our water in a very big way because we don't want any chlorine in our water. We don't want all the, the stuff they're putting in there. Um, and I just generally don't trust it. You know, I think that's what it comes down for me. It may have purified the water. But there's other ways to purify the water and the, the stuff the city does. I don't always trust the study, the stuff the city does um, because we, we have unhealthy people here doing what the city does. So <laughs> just, just my take on it. Um, Salwa says, my LDL are high, uh, 158. I eat healthy. What shall I do to decrease it? I take krill oil, omega-3, uh, salmon, olive oil, cut 90% dairy except kefir. Um, what shall I do? Um, so Salwa, so, uh, first of all, I don't get super concerned about, about the, the LDL where it's at. Um, you know, cholesterol, when it comes to cholesterol, a lot of blame has been put on cholesterol for heart disease and think us thinking that cholesterol is what's causing heart disease. And we have to think that cholesterol is not, cholesterol is a hormone and it goes there to repair a lot of things. Your, your body could be in a repair mode with where it is right now with its cholesterol. What I would do, Sawa, to really get your risk for heart disease um, reduced as best as possible is to do the, the native body reset, right? To have quality protein, vegetables, berries, good fats, do that consistently for 90 days, and then check your HDL. Keep taking the krill, um, eating the salmon, the olive oil, keep cutting out the dairy, kefir's fine. But what that's what I would do is do a do a 30 day reset and see what happens there to your cholesterol profile, right? Your cholesterol profile. Because there's a lot more than just the LDL. It's the LDL to triglyceride ratio and a lot of other things that you can look at, like your A1C to look at your risk of inflammation in the body. So lots of things that to do there, but really anybody who has questions like that, do the native body 30 day reset, really helpful. Um, <clears throat> Joanne says, is there a way to change type one diabetes and was born with type one came later? I have heard of it, um, Joe Allen. Um, and so again, going back to 
type two diabetes is more um, environmental, right? That happens because of the things that we eat and the way we move. And they'll say type one is, is a bit more genetic. Um, but you'll also hear a lot of that type one diabetes is an autoimmune issue, right? So when, when I hear type one diabetes, I would encourage you to get, really get focused on healing the gut as best you can. Um, and that, that means in removing any gut potential, potential irritating foods. So that would be processed, refined foods, sugar, alcohols, grains, uh, legumes like beans, dairy, nightshades like peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, focusing on whole real food. Protein will be extremely important, like protein in every meal, good quality, grass-fed beef, wild-caught fish, chicken, things like that, lower carbohydrates, and then doing a lot of things to seal the gut lining, like collagen is a very important thing, very helpful in sealing the gut lining, bone broths, a good probiotic and prebiotic. We have a probiotic here at Native Path. Um, those things are the, are the direction I, I, would, I would point somebody. And no matter what, you're likely to see improvements with uh, your, your blood sugar levels and less dependency on, on insulin injections. So I have never met anybody who's reverse type one diabetes, but I have heard of it. So, and I have heard a lot of people getting radical improvements through the things I, I mentioned here, along with things like taking care of your sleep and getting good sun and um, all the other things, exercise, things like that, all very important. Walter says, I use organic raw honey instead of jam for waffles and toast. Is that okay? Organic raw honey? Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, is it okay? It, it, it depends on who you are and what you're up to, Walter. Like if you, Walter, if you're dealing with any health issues, you're trying to lose weight, I would encourage you to move away from that. And I also encourage you to move away from the waffles if you're trying to do that, right? If you're, if you have any health issues, I would encourage you to go back to quality protein and veggies and see what happens. But if you feel good, doing great, having an occasional organic raw honey with waffles, it's great, right? But like, how often are we doing that? Is that like an everyday thing? Is that, you know, because to me that that's, those aren't foods like you want to do every day when it comes to the, the habits, the everyday stuff, really want to be careful. Set yourself up for a win. Um, TT Turner, what about molasses? Molasses, that's like that, not too familiar with, I don't, we don't do much molasses in our house. I'm not too familiar with it. So, my, you know, my take would be no on that. Um, again, this comes back to, I know it's a, a big sugar, blood, sugar boosting thing. So it comes back to who you are and what you're up to. The sugar, that stuff like that, if you're really active and you're already lean, probably okay every now and then. But if you're, if you're trying to get healthy or lose weight, I would suggest taking it out. Uh, Lynn says, "Could can you use stevia to make homemade bread? I, there's definitely a lot of homemade bread recipes out there. If you're going to do that, Lynn, what I would suggest is Google something like paleo bread stevia. And that way you're making that bread with good ingredients like almond flours or cassava flours or things that don't have gluten containing grains in the flour. So you're making homemade bread and it has wheat, rye, or barley. I, I wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest you, you just Googling paleo bread and, and using the stevia that way. That's going to be a better option. What monk fruit doesn't have erythritol? Uh, I think there's lots. I'm, I'm not familiar with all of the monk fruit brands out there. And what, Rachel, do you have any more? In it? I, mean, I think it just depends on the, the brand, right? It does. Yeah. I don't know any brands off the top of my head, but there are some that do not contain it. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully Roberto, we, we, we helped that, but you can, you can Google that stuff. And when it comes to the granular stuff I, and brands, what, what brands have it and what brands don't, I'm, I'm not the, that's not my zone of genius. Ruth says, how do you purify your water? So Ruth, what, what uh, my wife and I have done for many years is we just have a Berkey system. So we have a, we got a Berkey system from Amazon, put it right next to the counter and you pour water comes out of our, our water faucet. And then we pour water into the Berkey and it, it filters it through like a bunch of different layers. It's a great, easy, inexpensive way to filter your water. You can also take it with you and there's different sizes that you can get. So really helpful in that way. Since then we have, yeah, well now we have a house purifier. We, we're so serious about our water. We have a house filter. So like when we shower, it's already come through the house filter. And uh, we also have a below the sink water filter now. Uh, because we put so much priority in the water. I can't tell you the brands. My, my wife knows these things. I'm just like, let's do it. I trust you. Um, but that's how we do it. So, okay. Okay. 
Rebecca says, thank you. I learned a lot, especially the five band foods. Yes, thank you so much for coming, Rebecca. And Coach Ray, yep. Yep, and Cheryl says, I enjoyed it, learned a lot. Barbara says, thank you, it was very helpful. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you for coming, everybody. So again, we love these. If you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to us at cs at nativepath.com. If someone from our team doesn't know the answer, they'll usually, the question will get to me and I'll, I'll answer it as best I can. Um, but I hope everybody likes the hazelnut creamer. I would highly encourage everybody to take advantage of the hazelnut creamer. We're super excited about it. It's also got the new labels that we love here at Native Path. We're really excited about those. Rachel can show you there. Beautiful new colors, uh, but nothing to lose here. Try it, and we would love to hear your feedback. And you can join us in the private group with Rachel. Take some pictures of you and your hazelnut creamer. That would make us really happy. We all jump for joy when we get like that. So thank you, John. Thank you, Carol. And uh, thank you all for just, just taking interest in your own health and, you know, it, cleaning out your pantry. That's how we do it, y'all. That's how we do it. One little thing at a time, taking steps on this path. So thank you, Deb. Awesome. Well, that's all I have. Rachel, you got anything else? No, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely love hearing all the comments of people learning something today, because this is something that we're very passionate about is really putting good things in your body, you know, maximize nutrition, minimize toxic, toxicity. So for us to be able to teach you one way to start your day on a healthier note with something that's going to make you feel good, going to give you energy. And like I said earlier, this is my reward of the day. So it's something that I'm excited for. It's something I look forward to. And I definitely am going to be looking forward to all your feedback because you're in for a treat because this is so good. And like I said, all the flavors are good, but this one has to be my favorite. So I'm excited for you guys to try it and you can get a special deal right now. So stock up, stock up while it's on sale. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for joining me. I always love it when you're here. And how about this? Krista? You got anything you want to say before we go? No, just thank you, everybody. This chat was on fire today. I loved everybody's input, the questions, the Q&A. Um, we just had so much going on today, and I just thank you all. We will be sending more information on chlorinated chicken. That was a big deal to you all. We will be sending more information from Dr. Chad and the Native Path team on that. Um, and keep an eye on your inbox, the link to the recording and a text recap and a link for the special offer for this and our other flavored creamers um, will be in your inbox later today. So keep an eye out. Awesome. Thank you, Krista. And I just have to share that Krista helps out a ton behind the scenes and helping us put these webinars together, doing a lot of research and helping me get the information I need to present to you guys. So thank you so much. And, and Lynn, Lynn says you're making, know that we're making a difference. And thank you, Lynn, for for sharing that with us that that's why we do what we do you know um that's really special so thank you guys all right everybody we're gonna we're gonna call it there and again if you have more questions let us know we're gonna email you the recording email you the link if you want to take advantage of the discount please do and we'll see you again in i think another two weeks we'll have another webinar so thank you everybody have a good day bye-bye bye-bye